It is time for another After Effects tutorial. And yes, I know what you may be thinking. And let me tell you, it's going to be so worth it because people actually charge money for this, but I don't. I'm gonna give it to you for free. So today I'm going to show you how I create my own title animations in After Effects for free. I hope you're ready because this is going to be a good one. Let's go. Let's start with opening up After Effects and create a new composition. In the composition settings, choose a name for your composition and check the frame size. For the duration, usually what I do is I make it a little bit longer because I want to be safe because you can always trim it down later. So what I do is I choose 10 seconds and later I'll probably change it to maybe five. And now our first step is to add the text. You can enable the text tool by going up here and click on the T or you can click on Ctrl T. When you hit Ctrl T and you add your text and then you want to create another text layer, so you hit Ctrl T again, what happens is the direction of the text changes from horizontal to vertical. So make sure that you don't hit on Ctrl T again. And if you do that, hit it again. So either hit it once or hit it three times so you're back to horizontal text, unless you want vertical text. The words are added, so now it is time to style the text. Be as creative as you want to be. Use all the colors, use all the fonts, use whatever you want. After you're done styling all the text, it is time to reposition the text. And before you do that, make sure to hit V on your keyboard to enable the selection tool. And now you can easily just drag it around. If you want your text to align, for example, I want creators and become to be on the same height. What I do is I select the word creators and I select the word become and I hit P so I can see the values. There are X values and there are Y values. Depending on how you want your text to align, either copy the X or copy the Y of one word and then paste that to the other word. Now it is time to create a mask and we're going to create a mask for every word because this is how we're going to make the words appear. In order to achieve this, all we need to do is we need to go up here and select the rectangle tool. You want to create this rectangle on top of the word, so on top of the end position of the text, because we've now rearranged all the words. This is where we want it to end up. So we have to create a rectangle that overlays the end position or current position of the word. In order to keep things organized and I understand what is what and what mask belongs to what word, I rearrange the layers right here and I make sure that it's on top of every word in the list. The next step is to click on toggle switches slash modes, where you will get the option to select a track mat. Click on the drop down menu of the word that you just created a rectangle for and then click on alpha mat. Now you will see that the rectangle has disappeared. It's still there, but it is a mask. So what happens now, if you reposition the text, you will see that it will disappear. It will only appear when it is in the now transparent mask. In order to animate this word, what we're going to do is we're going to hit P again and we're going to create keyframes. The first keyframe that you want to create is the keyframe of the ending position. And then you want to go back to the beginning of the timeline and then create a keyframe where it disappeared. So let's do this for all the layers. Let's first create a rectangle for every layer, put that layer on top of the word that we created that layer for, go to the drop down menu of that word and select alpha mat. Then lastly, we have to hit P, we have to create some keyframes. Again, first make sure that you create a keyframe for the end position and then move a few frames backwards to create another keyframe, which will be the starting point. Now with this, you can be as creative as you want. You don't need to do it like me. You don't need to slide your first word in from the right. Of course, if you want it to look like this, then you should do that, but just be have as much fun as you want. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to do it like me. You can let it slide in from the left or from the bottom or from the top. Just do whatever looks good for you. Now that we've created keyframes, what we want to do is we want the animation to look a little bit better, a little bit smoother. And the way to do this is to select both keyframes of one layer and right click on it, click on key assistant and choose easy ease. Now you'll see that your little diamond thingies have become hourglasses. What we want to do in order to make it look a little bit smoother is we want to open the speed graph. Now you will see this perfect hill, which means that it will speed up and slow down. 
However, what I personally like and what I do with my titles is that I want it to go fast and then slow like that. Fast and then slow like that. So in order to do that, you want to grab this handle and you want to just drag it to the other side. So this perfect heel becomes very pointy. So you can do two things. You can either grab the right handle and drag it to the left to create this animation where it goes very fast and then it slows down, or you can do it the other way around. You can grab the left handle and you can drag it to the right, which means that it's slow at first and then it speeds up. Let's first do this for all the words and then we can move on to the next step. Now that we're done with that, we want to add some motion blur. And in order to add some motion blur, we have to go down here again and click on toggle switches slash modes. Now up here, you will see the little icon with three circles. And this stands for motion blur. And in order to enable motion blur for the layers, what you have to do is just click on the empty box and ta-da! But now you won't see it until you click on the motion blur icon right here. As I said in the beginning of the video, the duration is 10 seconds and we don't need 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this in the composition settings. Now I'm going to do something that you may not agree with, but I have a really good reason for it. So if you use Premiere Pro, you've probably heard about dynamic links. And dynamic links are great. It allows you, for example, if you're working in Premiere Pro and you want an After Effects composition in it, it allows you to link those two projects so that when you change something in the After Effects composition, it will also change in Premiere Pro. Now, the reason why I didn't create a dynamic link is because I know that a lot of us, we don't have beasts of computers, we just have regular computers that can handle After Effects, that can handle Premiere Pro, but dynamic linking, that's just tricky. So what I'm going to do, which you may or may not agree with, is I export this as a video. So I cannot make any changes to it anymore, but if I want to make a change, I just open up my After Effects project and I make the change and I just render it again. Yes, it can cost a little bit more time and no, it is not the most efficient way, but if it keeps my projects fast, that is worth more to me than that extra minute that I have to wait for my title to render. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Export and Add to Render Queue. Now you'll see the output model right here, which says lossless. And we want to change this by clicking on it and then select right here, select RGB plus alpha. This will make sure that the background is transparent instead of black. So you can actually put it on top of your clips in Premiere Pro. Now it is time to render. And I know what you may be thinking, we're done, but we're not done. We are not done yet. Now you have to go to Premiere Pro, import your title to your Premiere Pro project and find a good spot where you want the title to be. Now you can scale it up, scale it down, reposition it here in the effects control. This is the moment where you can click anywhere, but if you're going to click somewhere, make sure to click on this video. And of course, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell in case you want to be notified. And so we can see each other in the next video. Come on, go click on.